Until now, we have discussed three steps in stroke prediction case study. Step one was understanding the business problem. So we started with step one. Let me get this. Yeah. There's some issue with the pen. Okay. So we started with step one. That was understanding the business problem. What is a problem statement? We want to find the main drivers that will affect the stroke in a given patient or in a given person. Then step two was loading the data from various sources. We can load the data. Step three was the actual important step. We transformed or transformations of the data. We have created multiple columns or we have cleaned some columns. There were some missing values. We handled them. There were some errors. We have handled them. There are some columns where we have to extract a particular information from that column. We did that too. Now let us go to step four. Step four is known as creating data model. The term model, we should not take the literal meaning out of the model. Here, the data model means creating the relations between the tables. Let us see how to work with this data model. It's a very simple concept. If you want to model the data, then there is an option here. You go to this place called model. Can you see that on the left hand side? The third one is data model. Right now, these two tables are not connected. Sometimes automatically some of the tables based on some of the fields, they are automatically connected, okay? But when there are any connections like that, you have to remove those connections and you make sure that you are creating those connections between the data sets. Now, this is patient general details. This is risk factors. Both of them are patient details only. Now, how are these two fields connected? Here, there is patient ID. Here, there is patient ID. The name of the column is patient ID here. The name of the column here is just ID. These are the ones that we need to connect. Every patient in this general details table is connected to every patient in this table. Okay. You can simply connect them by dragging this ID and dropping it on that ID, whatever you want to connect. In fact, you can click on that and check what type of relation is that? It is a one-to-one -one relation. Every one patient here, one patient ID here is connected to one patient ID here. This is the age of the patient, whether they're married or gender, etc. Those details are in this table. And the remaining details like risk factors, the health-related factors like glucose level, BMI, heart disease, hypertension, they are on this table. Here, our data model looks very simple sometimes you have multiple tables if you have multiple tables connecting them this particular data model may be a little complex not every time it will be one to one relation sometimes it will be one to many relations as well in the next case study we are going to handle a complex data model where we'll have multiple fields where we will have multiple columns where we will be connecting them as of now, there are two simple tables and drag one of them and drop on the other one. This is nothing but the data model. Now what we will use is, we are going to use something called DAX. DAX stands for Data Analytics Expressions. Before you go on to analysis, once you are done with data model, once you are done with data model, before you go on to analysis, there is something in between you have to do. That is creating DAX measures, creating DAX measures. What do you mean by creating DAX measures? It means that some calculated fields you have to create. To create those calculated fields, you require a programming language or different programming language called DAX. What is DAX? What is the full form of DAX? Data analysis expressions. What is DAX? It's a collection of functions, operators, and uh, constants that can be used in a formula or expression. We are going to work with DAX very extensively here. If you are good at Power BI, if you are uh, an expert at Power BI, it means you are an expert in DAX. Power BI has two programming languages. 
what was the other programming language that we have seen when we are doing the data transformations there was one more language there was one more syntax that we have used previously what was it that was m language do you remember that m language now here it is known as dax language m language is used in data transformations dax is used to create new measures we are going to see what is dax dax is a very important concept when it comes to power bi first of all what is a measure you can think a measure it is a similar to aggregation function in sql if you have worked with sql we have created some function average function count minimum maximum you can apply and find out sum of a particular column you can apply and find out average of a particular column to calculate these and store them where do we store them we store them in a measure to calculate these we use dax formulas dax measure so if somebody says a measure or a formula or dax measure all of them they mean to say the same thing you can create the measures by yourself and you can see all those measures a simple example of the measure is let's say if you have the age variable and what is a measure tell me if you have age variable give me an example of the measure which can be calculated on this variable average age that is a measure that you can calculate and there will be a formula for it okay if you have quantity column what can be a measure sum of all the quantity okay remember the measures are calculated on the whole data or column these measures are aggregated measures that means these measure will be available or it will be calculated on the full column or the full data these dax formulas that we are going to use they look very similar to excel formulas but there is a huge difference excel formulas they don't work on the whole column yes some formulas like some they work on the whole column most of the times excel formulas work on a cell inside a cell a formula is applied in excel whereas dax works not on the cell wise it works on the whole column wise calculate the average age let us create one measure on the left hand side you go to the dashboard one or the report one and then let us create a new measure wherever you want to create the measure you click on this one here new measure it will open this window you click at this new measure and you write the measure name i want to create average age now how do you calculate that the formula is simple most of them look similar to excel formulas average for me i am getting auto recovery contains some recovery like i am just closing this up okay okay now looks like there is some syntax error i haven't completed it okay average you can actually make use of this intelligence let's say if your intelligence is not working just submit the formula just submit the formula partially and then once you submit the formula partially automatically this intelligence will open and then i'll go to general details table average age then hit enter average age look at that average age is created okay now remove the files for me i'm getting a different error hold together it says auto recovery maybe once we close the file open the file some auto recovery is happening i'm just ignoring those files okay for you you will get this new calculator symbol can you see that calculator symbol and average age this is average age now how can you use that look at this there is a table click on that table and then drag this average age there okay then what you will see is average age in general details table the average age is 43.20 can you see that average age is 43.20 if you want to make it a little bigger then you can go to this format your visual we're going to see all those uh, details later on but as of now i'm just doing the format your visual the values i'm increasing apart from values if you go down you will have column headers that also i am increasing the size so that it looks slightly bigger average age is 43.20 that is one of the measure that we have created now there is something called context this average age is 
calculated in the context of full data. What if I change the context? Let me create a new table here to explain you the uh, to explain you the concept of context. What is the context here? Average age. Whose average age is that? The context, underlying context is all the patients, everybody, complete patient details, their average age is 43.8. What if I want to know gender wise, let's say average age. Right now, if I include gender here in this table, check this out. So you can change the order here. Right now, average age is shown first, then gender is shown next. I am just swapping the order here. Female, male, and a other. The gender takes four values. Female, overall average age is 43.20. But female average age is 43.70. Male average age is 42.46. NA, when there is not available, gender not available is 52. Other is 26. So what is context? We have calculated the average age on the overall data. This is on the overall data. What if we change the context now we are calculating the average age. Here the context is male, female and all that. What if we change the context to something else? Let's say marital status. Let me copy paste this. All of you, what am I doing here? I'm just copy pasting this. Control C, Control V. And then here instead of gender, look at this. On the right hand side, I'm checking the columns. Instead of gender, if I take marital status, keep it in the beginning. Just push it up. Metal status, yes, average age is 54. Metal status, no, average age is 21. It's obvious, isn't it? People who are not married, their age is generally lesser. And metal status, NA, that is average age is 62. Here, when you have calculated the measure, this measure, only one measure we wrote, but when you use only one measure that is on the context of full data, here this measure is calculated in the context of Gender, this measure is calculated in the context of what? This measure is calculated in the context of marital status. Can I do similar stuff? Tell me. Can you calculate based on residence type? Yes, average age based on residence type. Residence type, rural, urban, and NA. Rural, 42, urban, NA. Can you calculate based on the work type? Of course, yes. Work type. Work type. Blank values, children, government, you know, never worked, private, self-employed, different, different average age. What I'm saying is, if you write one formula for age, the power of Power BI. This is the real secret of Power BI. Why it is world famous right now why this is the market leader in all the business intelligence tools what is the major power of power bi it reduces our time and complexity in creating multiple formulas we have created one formula for calculation of average age we have created only one formula for calculation of average age but automatically automatically based on the context that formula is calculating Automatically for female population, what is average age? For the residence type, what is average age? For the work type, what is average age? If you're working on SQL or any other tool, you may have to write multiple formulas to calculate these values. But the beauty of your Power BI is that based on the context automatically, this will calculate. With one measure in DAX, this DAX behind the scenes data analytics expressions automatically it calculates the average based on the context. These are all context based measures and we don't need to define the measure in every context. Since this is the major advantage, it is suggested that you have to use as many measures as possible. Don't create newer and newer columns. Try to avoid creating newer and newer columns. Try to create as many measures as possible because these measures are automatically calculated based on the context. They are updated based on the context. In fact, not only that, I'll show you 
some other surprising result. These two tables are connected, right? You have created average age in that table. What if I want to find out based on the smoking status, what is the average age? I want to find out based on smoking status, what is the average age? Let me copy paste this table. This table is slightly different table. Okay. In this one residence type, I'm removing in this new table. Now I'm keeping smoking status here. Do you think is it going to work? These two tables are connected. Patients whose smoking status based on that, can we go to that age in that table connected? And then will it calculate the average age based on the context? Oh yes, it works. Let me put smoking status in the first column, average age in the second column. Look at this. You have this column in the second table. Smoking status, formally smoked, never smoked, smokes or unknown. However, it is in the second table. However, what is happening here? What is happening here? It is automatically calculating the average age from that table because these two tables are interconnected we have seen that in the data model these two are connected wherever there is a connection it is automatically getting the patient id based on the patient id age is calculated based on that average age is calculated this is how your dax measures work average age is one of the dax measures that we have discussed Okay, like that, there are several other DAX measures that we are going to create. Okay, that is the concept of context. Have you understood the concept of context? What is the context? Depending on where are you calculating, which segment you are calculating, these DAX measures will automatically get updated. Okay. Go ahead create all these measures that we have created create all these measures create all these tables try to play around with the table pause the video here try to play around with these tables right now you don't need to arrange these tables don't worry about the formatting and all that just get these numbers later on we will also get into formatting so pause this video and work on creating all these tables using the measure average age When you are working on large projects, you will be creating so many measures like this. That is where when you are working on very big project in general, in real life scenarios, it's always a good idea to keep all the measures inside a new table. So look at this process and try to, because we will be creating so many more measures right now. Average age is the only measure that we have. In future, we'll be creating several measures. We want to keep all the measures in one place, in one table. So how do you do that? Go to home and then first observe it. Then you can do it. Pause the video. Then later you can do it. First observe the whole process. Maybe you can make some notes. Home and then enter data. Create a new table. Enter the table name. So you can enter the table name as all measures. So I'm entering my table name as all measures. So all the measures are going to be in this table load. Okay. This is what I'm loading now. Right. Can you see this new table? All measures. Then what I'll do is I'll take this average is put in in this all measures. Okay. Take this average age and then drag and drop it under all measures. Okay. Let me click on this. There is another way. Right now, the table here, average age. The home table is general details table. Instead of that, I'll make it as all measures. Then it got updated. Column one is a blank column that you can delete it. Okay. Delete from the model. Column one not required. Now within all measures, you have average age is one of the measure. 
in future whatever measures that you are creating you can keep that in there it's not necessary that this measure must be here only because these are all connected tables once you take the average is automatically based on the context everything is calculated so we don't need to worry about that in fact all these tables they do not change even when you keep this measure here it's always a good idea to keep all measures in one table and luckily look at this it comes with this symbol automatically everything is here okay all measures it's easy to locate all the measures later on because if you have created 50 or 60 measures you will be searching for the measures if you have 10 or 15 tables if you have created 50 measures in a very large project then you will be searching for all of them it's always a good idea to keep them in one place okay now when you are analyzing data like this if somebody is guiding us what to do then we will be able to do whatever they are telling us to do but what if you yourself you are solving the problem from the scratch then what should be the process right now we want to identify the major factors that will affect stroke that's a problem statement and we do not have any blueprint we do not have any plan how to really go about it when you have absolutely no idea when you are starting from the scratch follow these steps you may want to make some notes here try to follow these steps okay first do this complete this create average age and put it in all measures after that start with this project solution okay let's create a fresh blank page and start with project solution now what is your target variable first identify the target variable for me the target variable is stroke whether somebody has stroke or whether they do not have the stroke okay what i want to do is i want to find out what is the stroke rate how many people have stroke how many people do not have stroke if i simply click on this if i try to bring this up here it is simply giving me summation of the stroke that doesn't make sense to me because stroke is a variable which takes zeros and ones one means a person has stroke zero means a person doesn't have stroke so i'm going to create a new column if you have zeros and ones in the target create a new column called rate okay stroke rate okay so here i'll go there and you have to click on that table all measures new measure create a new measure called stroke rate how do you create that so here is the column name stroke rate stroke rate that is equal to sum of risk factors go to that table risk factors stroke sum of all values divided by count does that make sense think about it all of you count whether it is zero or one that count will be there some only once will be summed up let us suppose if there are 10 patients out of them three patients have stroke that means they will have values one 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 remaining seven patients do not have stroke they will have value zero 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 so out of ten three are ones remaining seven are zeros so sum of all the ones will be three divided by count count of all the patients will be 10 3 by 10 30 percent is the stroke rate like that stroke rate is created this is the column that will calculate the stroke rate so if i just take the stroke rate and put it here that will give me the overall stroke rate let me just close this let me take a tabular value click on this click on the blank sheet click on this then you type stroke rate so let us see what is the error stroke rate is equal to sum of you take that risk factors table that's correct and smoking status yes summation of all the values divided by count let me retype this maybe somewhere we might have made some error count of risk factors table stroke can't display this visual for some reason let us see what is the issue let us try to find it out what is the issue sum of risk factors table 
Hmm. Have you found the issue? By mistake, what did I do here? Sum of smoking status is what I wrote. I should write stroke here. Yep. That is the error that I have made. Now that will work. Stroke rate. Now what I'll do is I'll try to take this stroke rate. Maybe first let me start with this table. Click on this table and then click stroke rate. This is the overall stroke rate. Remember, if you want to reformat it, there is an easy way to do that. Go to page one. Anyway, we have formatted it. I will take page one table here and then paste it in page two. And then instead of average age, I would like to have stroke rate. We can format it, okay? Because these values are here. It is given as a zero. That means it has been rounded off. What we will do is, We'll further format this value. How do you format these values? Go to values and then where is the formatting decimals? Let us see. Okay. Values. This is just the visual. In general, the effects are so create format home. Let me put this number. Right now it is taken as whole number. Instead of whole number, I'll try to take it as decimal number okay then the number of uh, decimals are until two decimals i will take it okay until two decimals 0 0.05 if you want to show it as percentage that will be even better i'll do it like percentage 4.87 is the stroke rate overall stroke rate what do you mean by stroke rate out of 100 patients in the data set that is given around 4.87%. Overall stroke rate is around 5%. That's what we are getting in our data. Overall, if you want to change it by context, context-wise, if you want to find the stroke, because in some segments, stroke will be at higher rate. In some segments, the stroke will be at lower rate. Let's say you take the same stroke rate, but if you want to see it by heart disease okay if somebody has heart disease if somebody doesn't have heart disease what will be the stroke rate instead of heart disease let us take any other category smoking status let us take it by smoking status so people who formally stro smoked they have higher stroke rate people who smoke they have stroke rate never smoked they have lesser smoke rate unknown they have lesser smoke rate, uh, stroke rate or if you want to see it by some other variable maybe let us see by gender do you think Gender, does it have any impact on getting a stroke? Okay. Female, male, male seem to have slightly higher risk of getting stroke. Okay. Or depending on the residence, rural versus urban, does it have any change? So instead of gender, I will take rural versus urban, rural people, urban people, what is the stroke rate, etc. Okay. This is the stroke rate overall target variable. So always start with the target variable. If the target variable is continuous, if it is sales, then you may be interested in some action of all the sales, total sales that you will be checking total sales in every region, total sales by various contexts. The If the target variable is zero or one, buying or not buying, stroke or not stroke, customer is good customer versus not, not good customer, or the transaction is fraudulent versus non-fraudulent, then you create this rate. That means out of 100, what percent is zero, what percent is one. That's one measure that we have created. The next measure that we want to create is high risk factor. If a person has age above 55, okay, then there is a high risk to get stroke. There is a variable called age already available. Out of this, I want to write a condition. If the age is above 55, then I want to name that customer as high risk. I want to tag them as high risk. And if the age is below 55, then I want to tag them as low risk. Remember, you cannot create a measure here because measures are created on the whole data. But here I want to go to each and every row of the data. For example, if I go to this general details table, I will look at age 49, low risk, 78, high risk, 54, less than 55, low risk, high risk, low, 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 high, 
like that i want to create for every row i want to create a new value i want to create a new column here aggregated measure will finally work on the full data but for that you have to create a measure but here you want to work on every row if you want to work on every row you have to create a new column there are multiple ways of creating a new column here you can go and check new column that will create a newer column okay or you can go back to the previous step like say if you are here in this place if you are on the dashboard then you can go here and create a new column that's also fine wherever you are there are multiple ways to create new column so i am creating a new column here and what is the column name that i'm giving high risk factor 1 or a underscore high risk age underscore high risk one or age underscore high risk is what i'm creating that is called risk factor one and using an if then else condition i'm going to create that okay if if what is the condition if the age is greater than 55 so in the table general details if that age is greater than 55 this very much looks like an excel formula if that is true then make that as high risk okay in terms of age high risk age if the age is less than 55 otherwise else low risk age low risk age that is it once you click enter this new column is created high risk as well as low risk age this is the column that i'm creating okay low risk age high risk age as you can see this is a very important factor basically age plays a very big role if you have studied a little bit of stroke a lot of people who are having higher age they are prone to actually getting stroke so if you take this variable this is a new column this is not a measure by the way okay and then again state if you put like now this is not well formatted so what i'll do is i will take a copy of this and then instead of residence type i will take high risk versus low risk age let me put it up high risk age if people if a customer or if a patient has high age then they are very risky 12 percent that means almost in every 100 people 12 people are getting affected with stroke and if the age is less usually uh, it reduces overall stroke rate is around 4.87 percent but when person has lower age then they have very very less risk of getting stroke that is creating a new column okay now we can create measures not only based on the single table you can connect two tables then also you can create let us create one more risk factor there is one more risk factor let us create one more of that if the gender is male okay and if a customer has heart disease if the gender is male if a customer has heart disease already then that is another high risk this is one of the high risk based on the age the other high risk is if the gender is male if a customer, if a patient already had heart disease, then that is another high risk. Let me create another high risk factor. Let's call this as risk factor one. Okay, instead of saying age high risk, let's call this as risk. I'm just renaming that risk factor one. Okay, this is risk factor one. Let us create risk factor two. Okay. I'll go here and create a new column again. This is on if then else because gender is in every row. Look at this. Gender is in every row. And in some other table, if you go to risk factors table and here heart disease is also in every row. Now our challenge is we have to write a formula that will take one column from here and a related column from here. So let us try to create one such measure let us create new column sorry it's not a measure it's a new column here measure is calculated on the full column here we are creating a newer column 
which is high risk factor one. The new column is high risk factor two. Risk factor two is what I'm creating. This risk factor is if the gender, again, if condition, if gender, where is gender in general details? If gender is equal to male, then that customer is risky and for and you have to put two ampersands and from where you have to get that detail risk factor table, second table. But here you are in first table. You are in first table, you are creating a column in the first table, but you want to get the information from the second table. Then you have to use another function called related. Make a note here, all of you make a side note. If you are in one table, you want to get the information from second table. This is very important. There are so many places where you will use this related. If you use related, then you can access the information. Otherwise, without related, the tool also doesn't give you that option. If you try to write your uh, risk factors, it will not come. Only general detail table will be suggested. But if you write related, as soon as you write related, as soon as you type related, risk factor table is suggested. Then heart disease, if that heart disease is also one, that means a particular patient, gender is male, and from the related table, his heart disease is one, okay? Sorry, related heart disease, then outside that is one, isn't it? Get, go to related table, get heart disease. If that is equal to one, that completes our, this thing. Then that customer is high risk, high risk, high risk of type two, isn't it? High risk two, otherwise the customer is having low risk. So what I'm saying, if a customer is male customer or if a, if a patient is male patient and if a patient is having heart disease already, then they are considered as high risky. Now looks like there is some kind of uh, brackets that I have to give. Let me put all these brackets carefully. Let me add one more parenthesis here so that this all falls under if condition, if all this is true, then high risk else then low risk okay once you give that risk factor two this is risk factor one on age risk factor two is on these two factors now what we can do is we can go back to our dashboard and create a similar table like this this is risk factor one let me create a similar table with risk factor two so delete this risk factor and then risk factor two, high risk, 16% and low risk is 4.4%, just about almost the same as the population, but patients who are having those two issues, that means gender is male as well as heart disease, then there is a high risk. Like these are some of the drivers at the end of the day, we are going to give these as our insights. Right now, we are doing getting these insights in an unstructured manner. I'm going to tell you a step-by-step -step way. Right now, we are just exploring and creating some measures, creating some tables, which we will use in later on analysis. Right now, until now, the whole analysis is very much unstructured. Now, here is the structured way. First of all, just create the target variable stroke rate or target variable rate okay some of the sales if the target is sales some of the sales if the target is revenue summation of the revenue if the target is zero or one then calculate or measure like this rate okay then after completion of this you do the analysis step by step process what is your first step you do the univariate analysis univariate analysis you need one variable at a time. I'm going to tell you what exactly is univariate analysis and how do you perform that univariate analysis, individual variables on individual variables. Bivariate analysis, take every variable versus the target variable. What is the impact of age? 
on target what is the impact of residence type on target what is the impact of bp blood pressure on target which is stroke what is the impact of heart disease on target which is stroke okay so this is known as bivariate analysis then we are going to see the multivariate analysis multiple scenarios if a customer age is high if for the same patient if the if there is heart disease if there is bp does that indicate there is a high chance of stroke which kind of patients are getting to low stroke segment which kind of patients are getting to high stroke segment this is what we are going to discuss in multivariate analysis so you have to do it in this step by step manner especially for the problems you have absolutely no idea on how to proceed further when you are creating visualizations absolutely from scratch a lot of times in sessions like this everything is already given to you you'll be simply replicating what the instructor is telling you but in reality when you are solving a problem you have to know this structure how do you really solve a problem so you start with univariate analysis uni means one one variable at a time one variable analysis variable by variable so what you need to do is take all variables first take all the variables in the data divide them into two categories one is categorical or discrete variables the other one is continuous variables categorical or nominal variables what do you mean by that region east west north south that is known as categorical variable if you take a variable like gender what are the categories in it male female if you take a variable like marital status marital status married unmarried some other that is the categorical variable the other one is discrete variable they are numerical but they do not take some values in between for example number of dependents number of dependents take values 1 2 3 4 but it cannot be 1.5 or 2.8 or 3.2 number of children 1 2 3 4 number of loans that you have taken 1 2 3 4 you cannot have any values in between they are also kind of limited categories but they can be ordered they are known as discrete variables now other type of variable is continuous variable income income can be 12500 income can be 12800 income can be 12750 dollars as well so it is a continuous variable in a given range income minimum value is $1000 income maximum value is $80000 in this range it can take any value countably infinite values it can take so you take all the variables you divide them into two parts one of that is categorical or discrete variables for them you will be doing a different analysis the other one is continuous numeric variables for them you will be doing a different analysis if you go to our data set let us see what are the categorical variables what are the discrete variables if you take age what type of variable is that age you will get an idea from this symbol age is a continuous variable age high risk factor or risk factor 1 that we have created risk factor 1 takes high risk low risk let's go to our own data and check age is a continuous variable marital status ever married marital status what type of variable is that marital status it's a categorical variable ever married it's a categorical variable gender is a categorical variable risk factor 2 that is also categorical variable because we have two categories high risk and low risk id doesn't matter we will not be requiring to analyze that id has no meaning residence type rural urban categorical variable work type is categorical work type average glucose level which is continuous variable bmi is continuous variable heart disease yes or no so this is categorical or discrete discrete hypertension or bp this also comes as zeros and ones only bp yes or bp no that is also discrete patient id doesn't matter smoking status categorical variable stroke which takes value zeros and ones it is categorical variable you need to go through 
each and every column and find out what type of columns are categorical, what type of columns are continuous. Once again, what is continuous? A variable that can take any number between two values within a given range. They are known as continuous numeric variables. Discrete variables are heart disease, which takes zeros and ones. Hypertension, it takes zeros and ones. Stroke, it takes zeros and ones. That is the set of discrete variables. We handle the discrete and categorical variables the same way. Their exploration is same when we are exploring the data. But when it comes to continuous variables, age, age minimum value is let's say 20, maximum value is let's say 80. Between these, it can take any value. Average glucose level in a given range, it can take any value. BMI in a given range, it can take any value. These are known as continuous variables. Once you have done this segregation, you took all the variables, you took all the variables, and then we have divided them into categorical, discrete, and then continuous. Once you have done this segregation, first take this set of categorical and discrete variables, do a set of analysis. For continuous variable, there is a different set of analysis that we need to do. That is known as one by one variable analysis that is known as univariate analysis. You'll be finding some interesting results and we will be making note of those results. That process is known as univariate analysis. Our next step in this project will be univariate analysis.